Hey everyone, today we are taking a deep dive into a mid-journey technique that I've talked about a few times on the channel here, but I think it's really worth delving into because it's a lot of fun and it's fairly underutilized. Today, we're looking at photo bashing, what it is, how to do it, and some advanced ideas utilizing mid-journey's newer features. And I should note that this is kind of a different technique than most of the other mid-journey photo bashing tutorials that I've seen out there in that those tend to focus on generating images in mid-journey and then photo bashing or copying them together in Photoshop afterwards, whereas we're gonna kind of stick to mid-journey for this. Okay, let's get started. So just by way of definition, photo bashing is a fairly newer art technique uh, utilized heavily by concept artists or artists on a deadline. It involves taking various photographs or images, merging them together using editing software, and then combining them to create one single cohesive image. You tend to see a lot of photo bash pieces in the early stages of development for movies and video games. On the mid-journey side, we can take a fairly basic version of that concept and use that as a tool to collaborate with mid-journey for our final images. And on the plus side, you don't need to be a Photoshop expert or really even have a copy of Photoshop, to be honest. Now that said, you will need an image editing program of some kind. If you don't have a copy of Photoshop, there are alternatives, both free and paid. On the paid side, I would recommend Affinity Photo 2. Uh, I've used it in the past. It's really great. It's essentially Photoshop without the recurring subscription. And on the free side, there is a program called GIMP. It's a long running open source project. Um, it's been around for ages. It's very stable and has everything that you could possibly need. And finally, on the free online side, we have a site called Pixlr. Um, I have not played with it that much, but it does appear to have everything that you would possibly need. Uh, mostly we're looking for an image editor that has this layers ability. As a note, if you do decide to try out Pixlr, just make sure that you pick this Pixlr E advanced photo editor option. Uh, the basic version is not gonna have layers. So at its core, what we're doing is putting together rough collages for Midjourney to look at instead of utilizing multiple image prompts, which can sometimes confuse the bot and you know we end up with unstable images. And we're gonna take a look at the bigger picture in just a minute, but what I did wanna showcase is how we can use photo bashing for simpler and more subtle edits. Using very basic cut and paste techniques, we can manipulate our images for really subtle edits. Uh, it works especially well, I think, for acting and emoting, something that Midjourney does not always nail. For this example, I generated a young woman having coffee at a coffee shop, AR23, very simple. Overall, it's a pretty decent image. There are a couple of problems like the hand holding the cup of coffee, like who holds a cup of coffee that way. And uh, she does have two different colored eyes. I think it's, it's called tetrachromia, I think, tetrachromia. Um, I don't know if that was intentional on Midjourney's part or if that was a rendering mistake. We certainly did not call it out in the prompt. But because we also did not call out any expression in the prompt, she's kind of got that neutral, you know, Midjourney stare. So I thought that this would make a good example to try to photo bash a happy face on and see what we got. So I went over to Unsplashed and I grabbed this image of a happy woman smiling. Um, and all you have to really do here is just grab her face, just literally do the hackiest job of all time. <laughs> paste that image on top of our mid-journey output. And yes, I know it looks terrible. And then just export the whole thing as a PNG. Back to mid-journey, all we have to do is upload the file, hit enter, and now we have a URL. By right-clicking and hitting copy link, we can then run our original prompt with the URL of our reference image in front of it. And as a result, we get these images in which we can see her expression clearly has changed while still retaining the elements of the original photo, like the same color of the sweater, the same atmosphere of the cafe. If there is one thing that I think I would like to experiment more with is maybe placement on the bashed face and raising that up a little, I think that might have caused sort of that closeness of the coffee cup to the face, particularly in that second image where it's essentially masking her smile, but that's something to explore some other time. One thing that I think that photo bashing is very useful for in Midjourney is adding props to characters. So for example, this is a random picture that I found. I think that's Channing Tatum um, dressed as a cowboy. Um, and we're gonna grab him and put him into a jungle scene. So to do that, in Photoshop, you can just use the quick selection tool, which just allows you to do that. I believe that Affinity and GIMP should have something along those lines. In a worst case scenario, Adobe has a free background remover. You just upload your image and then AI knocks out the background for you. And then you can download your image from there. So 
that's an option if you don't feel like futzing with quick selection tools. From there, I grabbed a random stock photo of a jungle rainforest scene and copy pasted Cowboy Channing Tatum into it. Unfortunately, in a save as mishap, um, I ended up losing the original source file. But as you can see, I then grabbed a uh, blue umbrella. I think this is actually a beach umbrella. Like it's an outdoor umbrella, not a person umbrella. Um, and then pasted that onto uh, our cowboy Channing Tatum's hand badly, as you might see as well. Um, and then added a volcano in the background, because why not? Taking that entire image and then exporting it out as a PNG, and then running it with the prompt cinematic still, medium shot, a cowboy in a jungle holding an umbrella in the background, a volcano is erupting, gives us this image, which is obviously leagues better than our terribly photo bashed image. Now you might say that that is not Channing Tatum, nor does it look like Channing Tatum, and that is true. Mid Journey doesn't really do exact likenesses. Instead, what it's taking a look at is the overall archetype of the character, in which case Channing Tatum was dressed as a cowboy, so we indeed have a cowboy. It is interesting that Mid Journey lost the volcano uh, in this output. I think it's kind of represented by these like god rays coming down, um, though the background has that kind of like smokyish vibe that kind of gives the, the vibe that the volcano had erupted and now there's just sort of ash flowing everywhere. That said, if we actually specifically want a volcano back there, um, I've got some ideas on that that we'll talk about later in the video. Since we were discussing archetypes earlier, here's an interesting way of creating characters within Mid Journey uh, that have archetypes that obviously Mid Journey will recognize because it created it. Simply use the prompt imagine, full body shot, comma, a description of the character, comma, studio background, comma, white wall, and then set it to an aspect ratio of two, three. That way you ensure that you're getting a full body shot from head to toe, and you'll get a character that Mid Journey will recognize because, you know, it made it. For example, in this one, we have a mystical warlock holding a sword. Uh, in this one, we have a Viking yelling in battle, swinging a war ax. As a quick tip, by the way, someone in the comments had mentioned that they were having problems generating swords and axes. Um, generally, if you put a action in front of that weapon uh, that the character is doing, like in the Vikings case, swinging a war ax, um, you tend to have a better chance of getting it then. There's also a businesswoman walking on a phone, walking on a phone? I put walking on a phone apparently, not talking on a phone, she's walking on the phone. Uh, and then finally a soccer player bouncing his ball with uh, his foot, um, though it does look like he's going to miss that shot. As a follow-up on that aspect ratio of 2-3, if you do have a reference image that you want to use that is not in 2-3, for example, the uh, Black Widow here, in the superhero pose that's more in a landscape 16.9 uh, format. If you do choose to use that as an image reference and run your prompt, my recommendation would be to not use an aspect ratio as I've noticed that you get a lot of cropped images that way, like the head is missing or, you know, not missing, but cut off rather, um, or the feet are not in view. Um, so if you run it without an aspect ratio, you'll get your square image, but you tend to have the full body in it that you can then cut out. Before we move on to the next section, I do invite you to like and subscribe if you have not already. Uh, additionally, just as with the last couple of videos, there is a PDF cheat sheet of the material covered in this video available over at Gumroad. It is free, um, though if you would like to leave a donation, you are more than welcome. And I would like to thank everyone that has left a donation over the last couple of weeks. It is very, very much appreciated. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, let's get back to bashing. So once we have our character generated by Mid Journey, and again, since we did it against that white background, it should be fairly easy to mask out or knock that white out. Um, we can then create a background image for that character. In this case, I ended up going with a mystical urban cyberpunk alley because I love mystical urban cyberpunk alleys. Uh, it did come out a little bit on the painterly side, um, but I was aiming for more of a cinematic thing. That's okay because once we comp them together, I can then run a prompt and then change it back into more of a cinematic style. So I've put our warlock into uh, our background image. I didn't do the greatest job on masking um, here. In fact, actually, you can see this white uh, background in between here and here. I probably should have just used Adobe's AI tool. It probably would have been a lot more efficient. Um, but now that we have them together, I can run a prompt and sort of merge everything together and give it a unified style. 
and ultimately ended up with this, which I was pretty happy with. You can see that in the background, any of that concept sort of painterly look has been replaced with more of a photorealistic look because I called out a cinematic still in the prompt. Now that said, it did take a number of fairly terrible iterations before we got there. There was this, there were these images, which uh, maybe not so, so terrible, but I, a, I didn't want that kind of painterly look and B, it really feels like the characters are not actually in the environments. You know, it kind of has that it copy paste look. Some more examples where it's not quite working. So I did want to illustrate that it's important to keep iterating on your idea and experimenting with your prompt because very rarely, especially with image prompting and uh, photo bashing, do things come out perfectly the first time out. It's awesome when it does, but it's pretty rare. So that's just something that I wanted to mention since a lot of times in these YouTube type tutorials, uh, you tend to see only the best results. And I just wanted to let you guys know, you're not doing anything wrong. We all have to go through many, many, many bad images to get to you know the one that we're looking for. So anyhow, moving on. Um, so ultimately the prompt that I ended up using for this image was the URL of our image, cinematic still, weighted at four, uh, filmed by Ridley Scott, Wesley Snipes as a mystical warlock, comma, wearing armor, comma, holding a wand while swinging a sword, and then a multi-prompt break for mystical urban cyberpunk alley, and then an aspect ratio of 16.9. Now that said, our character did not come out very Wesley Snipes-ish. So um, let's return to the idea of photo bashing and see what we get. So nabbing an image of the Daywalker himself, Blade, um, I just grabbed the top of him because uh, I didn't need the rest of the trench coat and whatnot, and then pasted it onto our wandering warlock. Pasting him in, and again, I did not have to do a great job. Um, I did at least try to line up the shoulders, um, but again, the angle is completely wrong. Um, that said, I'm confident that Midjourney will suss it all out. Using our blade photo bash and running the same prompt got us this, which I, don't, I think is super cool. Um, yeah, maybe a little on the cheesy 90 side, I guess, um, but to me, this looks awesome. Uh, we could continue taking this image and photo bashing more and more, but to be honest, I was really happy with this. I, I just think it's really cool. <laughs> Another interesting thing you can do with your photo bash images is run a describe on it. So um, again, we took our Channing Tatum in a jungle with a blue umbrella image and let Midjourney figure out what all of that meant. And the results that it came back with were pretty interesting. One was a man with an umbrella near a tree in the style of cowboy imagery, jungle punk, ranger core, data is photo montage. Another that I liked was man wearing a cowboy hat with a blue umbrella in the style of Mysterious Jungle. And another one that called out uh, Steampunk and PS1 graphics, which was kind of a weird choice mid-journey. Doesn't look very PS1-y to me. So while I don't think that Describe is a good way of rendering your photo bash, I do think that it's an interesting way of exploring additional ideas to add to your prompt for your photo bash. So I hope some of that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any photo bashing tips or tricks, please let us all know in the comments below. I thank you very much for watching. My name's Tim. We'll see you soon.